Electricity networks around the world are evolving rapidly with the large-scale integration of power electronic interface distributed renewable energy resources drayers. With this rapid deployment of power electronic interfaced renewables, requirements set evolved to maintain grid security and reliability. Fault ride through FRT, referred to as under voltage ride through UVRT, or low voltage ride through LVRT, is the capability of electric generators to stay connected in short periods of lower electric network voltage. This is particularly important during voltage sags or swells. One of the important requirements in the grid codes is the low voltage ride through LVRT capability which demands to stay on grid and supply the expected reactive current to support the utility during grid faults. FRT is an essential requirement which should be adhered by drayers, which will ensure security and reliability of the power system during grid faults. Increase of low inertia systems connected to the grid known as distributed energy resources DERS such as solar, wind, fuel cell and battery system among the most common. This trend makes the power system susceptible to a catastrophic chain reaction in case of a grid fault. Fault ride through. To ensure critical equipment continues to be up and running despite power quality problems such as voltage dips, companies must make sure that adequate ride-through capa capability is included when the equipment is purchased. Customers then use the fault ride-through or FRT capability curves that manufacturers provide so that they can properly and regularly evaluate the equipment minimize future issues. FRT in PV systems Similarly, abruptly taking a high-capacity, grid-tied photovoltaic PV system offline introduces disturbances into the power grid that have a significant and adverse impact on power quality. To prevent this issue, the regulations governing such grid-tied systems have been updated to require PV equipment to incorporate fault right through FRT functionality. Also note that FRT grid codes vary from country to country. Type of faults Faults in power systems are divided into open circuit also called series faults and short circuit also called shunt faults. Faults shall stimulate the switching of the protection devices. Therefore, faults occur at the terminals of either active or passive electrical equipment. Active electrical equipments include synchronous and asynchronous machines or grid equivalents. Passive electrical equipment include transformers, transmission lines, or loads. Open circuit faults. Open circuit faults are characterized by, by an increase in voltage and frequency and a decrease in current in the faulted phase. Therefore, they can be detected by monitoring the voltage of each phase. If the voltage value rises, it means that an open circuit fault happened. Open circuit faults cause cessation of current flow and they rarely occurs. Short circuit faults. Whenever there is a short circuit fault, the voltage and frequency will decrease while the current will increase in the faulted phase. Accordingly, they can be detected by the observation of the current of each phase. If there is an increase in the current value, it highlights the initialization of a short circuit fault. Short circuit faults are the most hazardous as the current is increased to a lot more E.G 10 times more than the nominal current of the instrumentation. Short circuit fault may take an arc form on overhead transmission lines causing the conductor to burn and break if not timely cleared. Short circuit faults may also turn the faulted phase into loads in interconnected systems and that is because of the large decrease in voltage and frequency in those faulted phases. Accordingly, induction and synchronous motors may feed the fault during a short circuit fault which worsens the situation even more. Shorts are commonly occurring and there are two main types of short circuit faults, namely, symmetrical faults and unsymmetrical faults. Symmetrical faults. A symmetrical fault is balanced and it affects all phases equally meaning the voltage drops of all the three phases equal, equal and has the same magnitude, which is proportional to the severity of the faults. A symmetrical fault is the most severe because it involves all three phases and roughly 5% of faults involved in a three-phase system are symmetrical. Asymmetrical faults. An asymmetrical fault is unbalanced and it affects each phase separately, meaning the voltage drop of each phase is uneven and has different magnitude depending on the nature of the fault. An asymmetrical fault can occur as a line-to-ground LG fault, line-to-line -line LL fault, or double line-to-ground LLG fault. Asymmetrical faults are difficult to analyze and almost 95% of faults involved in a three-phase system are asymmetrical. 
The subsections below will provide additional details about the types of asymmetrical faults. Line to ground fault. A line to ground LG fault is caused by a conductor making contact with a grounded structure and it is the most common. 70% of the entire faults are found to be LG faults. The LG faults depicted causes IB equals zero, IC equals zero and VA equals zero. Line to line fall. If one phase touches another phase, it causes a line to line LL fault. About 15% of all faults are found in LL faults. The LL fault depicted causes IB equals zero, IC equals zero, VB equals zero and VC equals zero. Double line to ground fault. When two phases come in contact with the ground, it leads to a double line toe ground LLG fault. 10% of all faults fall under this type. The LLG fault that is depicted kisus IA equals zero, VB equals zero and VC equals zero. Continuity of electric power supply is essential. Therefore, issues that might cause a loss of a generation unit are unsolicited. The purpose of preventing a generation unit loss using FRT techniques is as much as economically important as it is technically. A voltage time or frequency time diagram called the FRT diagram is used to demonstrate the essential requirements a generation unit shall meet to ride through a voltage or frequency disturbance. The FRT diagram may be different among countries as the grid codes differ. During a fault, the grid code require the generation unit to stay connected to the grid within a certain range of voltage and frequency. Accordingly, the setting of the protection devices strongly relies on FRT requirements, which may require the generation units to generate maximum reactive power without violating the transient rating limits. The parameters involved in defining the FRT requirements include the follow. 1. Network design. 2. Generator type. 3. Gulf type and amplitude commonly short circuit faults. 4. Fault occurrence impedance. 5. Fault clearance period. 6. Power control procedure. The effects of the symmetrical and asymmetrical short circuit faults on the three phase voltage magnitudes vary. Consequently, they affect requirement of the FRT differently. Furthermore, the location of the generation units and other components is crucial in the application of the FRT. Voltage ride through during a fault, changes will occur to the system's voltage, current, and frequency which can lead to the disconnection of some generation units from the grid. This reduces the reliability of the power system. Therefore, therefore, TSOs, in presence of high integration of REN sources, require generation units to have LVRT capabilities or even ZVRT capabilities. In some cases, TSOs will require HVRT capability as well. A LVRT capability curve is displayed. The voltage of a generation unit operating in normal condition VN is as demonstrated in area. During a symmetrical fault or an asymmetrical LL or LLG fault, which occurs at the time interval T0, the generating unit experiences a voltage sag VL. The LVRT allows the generating unit to remain connected to the grid by withstanding the voltage drop for a certain time represented in area B. When the voltage level reaches at area C, the generating unit should disconnect from the power system. The voltage is regulated back to VR when the fault is cleared after T2. This LVRT capability ensures fast post-fault recovery and stability for the system. How should FRT work? FRT capabilities vary from equipment to equipment, and sometimes it takes a few seconds before the voltage returns to the nominal level. In a PV system, FRT functionality allows it to continue operating even if the grid experiences a period of reduced voltage lasting one second or less. Specifically, when the FRT function operates, it becomes necessary to observe the voltage waveform for about 5 seconds after the drop in order to verify the stability of the grid. A power quality analyzer capable of capturing the power situation both before and after such an event is useful in order to meet this requirement. FRT capability is mostly expressed with the voltage time or frequency time diagram that shows the desired capabilities for a generation unit to ride through a voltage or frequency disturbance in order to ensure the system's security. The purpose of using FRT is to prevent the generation lost as much as technically and economically is reasonable. FRT capability can be applied to the power generation units, power parks module, modules, and DC converters. The FRT's diagram is different among the countries. 
At the normal and short circuit condition, generation units must stay connected to the grid in a specific voltage and frequency range. World practice is Asper grid code. FRT regulations in Great Britain are so specific and pay more attention to some delicate points such as division of WTs into onshore and offshore, different operative fault clearance time, two-ended or three-ended circuits, and is divided into different kinds of retained voltage including 30%, 50%, and 85%. FRT regulation in Canada and America have different standards related to their country's classification. Europe Grid Code has a harmonized proposal, a specific regulation for power park modules, and finally, a wide range of FRT instead of a specific FRT which is because of a wide range of countries which should follow these rules. Because of protection issues, HBRT capability is less noted in the grid codes. For another category of grid codes like France and India, FRT requirements depend on the level of voltage which the fault occurs. LVRT requirements of South Africa's grid code consists of four categories which are based on the generating unit's rated capacity. In the upcoming years, the majority of the generation sources might be distributed energy resources and the grid strength would be comparatively lower than the current scenario. Low voltage ride through. The grid operator has this requirement. It is during the fault that the renewable plant has to ride through the low voltage occurrence at the system for the mentioned time frame in the grid code. In China, major blackouts occur as a result of entire wind parks tripping and getting offline as a result of a brownout. This has increased the focus and need for the LVRT feature of the wind turbine control system. LVRT feature for the renewable plant is much required to avoid cascading failures. LVRT requirements of the selective European countries are mentioned below for reference. It is observable that oscillations take place during the fault period, which can be caused by the current injection by the turbine. A high voltage overshoot is observable at the moment, following the fault clearing. The high magnitude can be explained by the fact that the clearing took place when the turbine was injecting the currents into the fault location, initiating the spike. When the grid is strong, there are a relatively large number of online synchronous machines providing a substantial amount of available short-circuit current and reactive support to the network. In a strong grid, the system series impedance is relatively low and the voltage is relatively constant versus load level. That is, as power flow increases in a strong grid, dV by dP and dV by dQ is small. However, a weak grid has a comparably small availability of short-circuit current either due to fewer online synchronous machines or a higher network impedance due to long transmission lines and multiple voltage transformations. This low short-circuit availability causes higher dV by dP and dV by dQ sensitivity, and these sensitivities increase as the electrical network becomes weaker higher risk of voltage collapse. Weak grids experience a high sensitivity of voltage to changes in power i.e. higher dV by dP, dV by dQ, and are more prone to potential voltage collapse conditions. Attempting to push active current during low voltage conditions could further degrade system voltage and result in collapse. Collapse. Reactive current should be given priority during fault conditions in these weak grid conditions, however, studies should ensure that reactive current contribution during fault conditions does not cause voltage overshoot or other problems that could trip the inverters. Fault ride through FRT is a key component of the grid code, and its properties have an impact on the performance and rating of power system equipment. FRT specifies the capabilities required for a generation unit to ride through a voltage or frequency disturbance in order to prevent the loss of that generation unit during and in post-fault conditions. In order to set the FRT's requirements, the fault type shall be determined as each type of fault has a different effect on the voltage and frequency of the system. FRT techniques, including LVRT, ZVRT and HVRT, and controllers which already have been implemented in the grid code worldwide all countries for renewable energy sources. Fault detection The complexity in the configuration of an electric grid and the urgency of power supply make a fault unwanted even if there are FRT capabilities within the grid. Faults are expected in power systems, however, they have to be timely detected and clear. Transmission lines are the first line to ensure the integrity of the grid, thus, TSOs must always ensure the network's reliability and stability. When a fault occurs, the affected branch of the power network should be automatically isolated. For this purpose, many protection devices are used such as fuses, circuit breakers, relays, and instrument transformers to isolate faults. The function of these protection devices is as follows. 
Fuse. It is an electrical safety device that provides overcurrent protection. It is essentially composed of a metal wire or strip that melts as excessive current flows through it, thereby it interrupts the current flow. Circuit Breaker It is an electrical safety switch that is automatically operated to protect against overload or short-circuit damage. It detects a faulty condition and interrupts the current flow by isolating the faulted branch in an electrical circuit. Relay it is an electrical safety switch that commands a circuit breaker to trip when it senses a fault, in order to isolate faulted branches of the electrical circuit. Instrument Transformer It is an electrical measuring device mainly coupled with a relay that protects a power network substation against faults at high-level applications e.g. high voltage or high current application. If a fault occurs, it transforms the voltage or current level down and isolates it. If protection devices timely and reliably operate, the detection of any deterioration in the system status will be easily identified. It will accordingly play a conclusive role to protect the operation of the grid. Otherwise, system crashes will be accelerated, hence, large-scale and long-time power blackout will occur. One of many serious events triggered by a GERD fault is the large-scale blackout of the America-Canada Power Network that occurred on August 14, 2003. It was a result of an overload fault, which caused the removal of four connection lines between the cities of Cleveland and Akron in Ohio.